I did a survey last week about the different ways people practice and it seems the majority just jump on the decks and they mix without any kind of preparation and they get to know the tracksuit playing them. So if you do this or you're open to the idea of mixing without any kind of preparation but mixing more creatively and making it really special, stick around as this video has you covered. Follow me. Okay, firstly, the advantages of mixing without any preparation is you bypass all the stuff that people find tedious. For instance, setting cue points and mapping out playlists in advance using your DJ software. And instead, they just jump on, get to know the songs through playing them, which I'll be honest, right? Man, it's heaps of fun, okay? But the downside is when mixing without any kind of preparation, it can be risky as you're literally getting to know tracks by playing them. And sometimes, especially if you're just hitting play randomly, you haven't really got a structure, which I'll talk about in this video, what could happen is maybe the main changes of the track don't line up and you're cutting bits in half and I don't know, bits are kicking in here and I don't know, man, it can get messy pretty quickly and that can lead to frustration and people giving up or their confidence taking a hit. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some insights on how I would approach mixing without any preparation. And I'm gonna give you some cool ways of looking at it to take your no prep mixing game to the next level. Okay, so firstly, without a doubt though, your best chances of making your transitions work is to wait for the last drop and then hit play on the first beat of the last drop. And by doing so, you're hoping that your intro of your new track is the same length as the chorus of your exiting track. And with any luck, as your old track finishes up, your new track starts to kick in. Now I'm gonna show you a quick example of that right away, okay? But stick around, as even though that method I'm about to show you, like it works great, but personally, I wanna try and be a little bit more creative than that because here's the thing, if you're always playing the full song, it can get boring, so stick around, but I'll just show you this is kind of like a fail safe way of what people do all the time. So okay, I'll show you. So let's say this song here, see here, that's, that's what I mean by the last drop. That last drop is just there. So have a listen, it's coming up. Okay, cool. Okay, and that's that drop. And what they do is they hit play there and they're hoping then the, the intro of their new song over here, they're hoping that as this drops out, this one kicks in and it works, it works really well. Let's, I'll show you, let's have a look. Now, sure, okay, mixing at the end of the track is mostly gonna work, okay? As when you think about it, the end of the track is where it usually starts to fade out anyway. But the only downside of mixing like this is it can get a little bit boring, not only for you, but also your audience. And let's say you put on a track and let's say it doesn't get the best response and you're playing live. To be honest, right, it would be good for you to have an option 
to mix out sooner, like earlier in the track, especially when some of these tracks can be over seven minutes in length. So personally, when I mix without preparation, my main goal, okay, it's set flow, but I also like to mix creatively and still achieve the mixes that I would be doing even if I was using cue points. So for instance, you know, replacing the drop or double drops or even mixing in after the chorus. And perhaps sometimes if I'm mixing without cues, you know, if I think, oh, there's a breakdown there, maybe I could put a breakdown on a breakdown, maybe get a mashup on the fly, you know, just experiment. But I try and do all that without any prep. And the best way to do that is no doubt to take educated guesses by looking at the waveforms and doing your best to not cut major sections in half and ideally get the main changes to line up and like I guess using an understanding of phrasing and music in general. And the beauty is once you've conditioned the core fundamentals of DJing, you're gonna be able to pull everything off. And even if a track does something unexpected, you can take it in your stride and potentially camouflage, like say something kicks in and it's like, oh, you don't want it to kick in. You can hide it all with advanced EQ work. And in truth, advanced EQ work, man, like it's kind of my specialty, like I love it, okay? And I've got game-changing videos in my course that have transformed thousands of DJs. And my students are always saying they look at the EQ now in an entirely different way. And they found, right, they've like through the EQ mix and also like so much, the whole course in general, it's really helped build their confidence behind the deck. So if you wanna take your DJ skills to the next level and be able to play any genre on any gear and build the confidence to be able to perform live, right, and also join our Club Ready Tribe, check out my course and I'll link that in the description below. But in this video, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jam a melodic house and techno set and I'm gonna do my best to combine a bunch of techniques, all of which are taught in full detail in my course. But this video is designed to get you thinking and it's ideally all about, that's what I'm all about actually, it's inspiring and motivating you really to hit the decks and in this case, get past this whole, oh, I only hit play on the last drop mentality, okay? I wanna, op I wanna change that a bit. And even though I may not be able to get you to set cue points personally, I know the people who don't do prep, they don't like doing that, right? but I may be able to get you thinking in terms of playing the best parts of each track and approaching your non-prep mixes with a goal to keep the energy moving, even at the risk of potentially making a fool of yourself, okay? And it is said, if you wanna truly master something, you have to first be a disaster. But again, if you wanna take, if you want me to help you, like, you know, to really build your confidence, again, check out my courses below. Sorry to push the courses, but I just love them. And I, I see what, like the response is overwhelming. But anyway, let's jump in. So just quickly though, I got these tracks last night off Beatport. And in truth, sure, I like them enough to get them, okay? But I haven't actually, I'm not that familiar with them. I haven't jammed them yet. so. I just wanted to go in cold today, okay, so we get a real experience. So fingers crossed I've got this, but I'm gonna do my best to keep things movingly, like moving, and undoubtedly it's about having fun, okay? But the hardest part for me, I reckon, is not jumping around because every time I do, the camera kind of moves. But anyway, man, so yeah, let's have fun. I'm just gonna do this. So I think what I'll do is I'll start, um, I, like I want to do that example again because it really is a good example coming in over the last chorus. So what I'll do is let's say I mix from that song into this song. So let's just pretend that's near the end here and I'll start with that one. But then after that, I think I'll just probably try mixing in the middle a lot. Like I said, I'm going to try and get like drops, double drops. I'm going to try and put like builds into breaks like coming in, like all these different kinds of things. So um, I don't know, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, let's go.
not break you if you were beside me and my love would take you I'll keep you in safety forever protect you I'll hide you away from the world you reject
you. That was awesome.